Minglawa and welcome to Amai Radio's Myanmar Today. I'm Michelle with the recent news and reports from around Myanmar. Bomong got the latest report on COVID-19 confirmed case doubles in number within 15 days from 16 August. Wilson will give us all the details on books on government reformation works released. Wilson also has the story on COVID-19 swap test situation in Nepidaw. Chennai, Amu, and Minto have the full story on resident in Inwar archaeological area face travel in COVID-19 research. All of these proposals will be coming up on Myanmar today. But for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. The Ministry of Social Welfare, Relief and Resettlement on Sunday organized a virtual meeting on effective implementations of the ministry's works in Rakhine State, abiding by COVID-19 rules. Junior Minister Dao Dao Wimye E, Deputy Minister Uso Aung, Directors General and relevant Departments Directors for Rakhine State attended the meeting. Speaking at the meeting, the Union Minister said that it is important to keep on undertaking the Ministry's works as part of the COVID-19 Economy Relief Plan and as part of preparations for COVID-19 control measures in Rakhine State that begins since March 2020. He added, the Ministry was conducting COVID-19 awareness programs and providing assistance including water and accommodations for vulnerable group people at IDB camps. He said the National Volunteer Steering Committee Secretary of it to keep on investigating the ground condition requirements in making arrangements for volunteers. The Ministry needs greater capacity to implement COVID-19 containment measures as confirmed cases of coronavirus in Rakhine State are rising at present. He added, calling for a round of discussions on fulfilling the Ministry's duties in accordance with the rules issued during COVID-19. The Union Minister made the remarks in the meeting with the Confederation of Trade Unions in Myanmar, the Agriculture and Farmer Federation of Myanmar, and the Myanmar Industry, Craft and Services Trade Union Federation, held at Gena Hall in Nandaya Industrial Zone, a Yango region, on Sunday morning. During the meeting, the Union Minister said that his ministry has been trying to reduce the impact of the COVID-19 on job opportunities and workers by trying to maintain regular operations of the ministry. He pointed out that many factories had to be shut down or reduced a number of workers because of the several reasons, including lack of raw materials and not receiving orders as the impact of COVID-19. The ministry has focused on stability of job opportunities, workplace safety, capacity development of workers, and promotions of foreign investment, said the union minister. The Union Minister commended Walker's Federation for providing emergency food assistance to their members. And following the COVID-19 preventive guidelines set by the Ministry of Health and Sports. According to the lab's results released by the Minister of Health and Sports at 8 a.m. on 30th August, three returnees, Myanmar seafarers, who are put facility quarantine in Kotdown Township in Adetafai, as the positive confirmed cases are undertaking intensive medical treatments at the exclusive ward of Okotang People's Hospital. Two of the seafarers are those who were signed off from MV Koyu Bolt Career through South Africa, and other one would sign off from MD Steadfast Chemical Career through Indonesia. Those were put in 21-day hotel quarantine in Kotang and were tested positive confirmed cases. They are not the residents from Kotang, but those from Yangon and Bogu region. The positive confirmed cases of three Myanmar seafarers were transferred to ICU of Godan People's Hospital from their hotel quarantines in line with the instructions of Ministry of Health and Sports regarding with the COVID-19 preventive measures. Myanmar people are in France, Spain, Belgium and Germany and some European countries arrived back home by a relief flight of Amelia Airline on Monday. A total of 87 Myanmar nationals landed at the Yango International Airport by the flight of France-based airline in the morning. The Ministry of Labor, Immigration and Population, 
the Ministry of Health and Sports and the local officials held the returnees for health inspections and arranged for a 21-day quarantine. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs cooperated with the relevant ministries and Myanmar embassies from respective countries to bring back Myanmar citizens who were stranded in foreign countries by relief flights and charter flights in accordance with the instructions of National Level Central Committee on COVID-19. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs organized a relief flight of Amelia Airlines to bring back 83 Myanmar sailors from tourist vessel operated by Norwegian Cruise Line Holding Limited on 7th John as they were stranded in France, Italy and the Netherlands. That's all with the local news. Now we'll move on to our first report. Myanmar's COVID-19 confirmed cases have doubled within 15 days since 16 August. As the spread of the COVID-19 infections in Rakhine is very rapid, so that it is very important to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 in Rakhine state. Also in Yangon, more than 20 persons did not have travel history nor close contact with the infected patients, but they were found positive while they were being monitored as the suspected persons. The Ministry of Health and Sports also keeps alerting the people to be well aware of the resurgence of the virus in the country. Let's have a report for more. According to the surge of the COVID-19 infections, which struck seriously in Rakhine State, Myanmar's COVID-19 confirmed case has doubled within 15 days since 16 August. As the spread of the COVID-19 infections in Rakhine is very rapid, it is very important to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 in Rakhine State. Also in Yangon, more than 20 persons did not have travel history nor close contact with the infected patients, but they were found positive while they were being monitored as the suspected persons. Dr. Papa, medical superintendent from the Nibiru 1000 Badet Hospital, spoke about the current COVID-19 situation in the country. All the head workers and all the professionals are working in the respective hospitals. In this current situation, the people participation is very important in preventing process against the COVID-19. The public has to wash their hands properly whenever they go out. They have to wear the mask, which is very important in preventing the infections from the others. All the people have to avoid the crowded places except for the important cases. By doing those basic steps, we can combat the deadly coronavirus. As the second wave infection is very rapid in this situation, I would like to urge all the people to follow the rules and guidelines from the Ministry of Health and Sports. By reviewing on the data of the COVID-19 confirmed cases from 23rd March, when the first confirmed cases were found to 15 August, there were a total of 265 COVID-19 confirmed cases in Yangon, while there were a total of 374 confirmed cases and 324 recoveries across the regions and states in the country. Since the locally transmitted cases were found out again in the country, especially in Rakhine State on 16 August, the number of the confirmed cases in the country has increased in double number. A total of 369 cases are recorded in the country within 15 days from 16 August to 30 August. 40 out of them are from Yangon region. It records up to a total of 324 COVID-19 cases in Yangon region, while there are a total of 775 confirmed cases with 352 recoveries in the country, as of the data released at 8 p.m. on 30 August by the Ministry of Health and Sports. To prevent the spread of the locally transmitted cases in the country, the government urged the people who had traveled to the townships where the positive cases were reported in Rakhai State from 10 August to report themselves to the authorities. The Ministry of Health and Sports also released the name of the passengers who traveled to Rakhai State by plane on its Facebook page. The people who failed to do will also result in the church against the natural disaster management law. 
Uang Jojo U, Pidu Lodo representative from Light Township, spoke to MI Radio how the prevention process for the COVID-19 are being carried out in the Light Township as the locally transmitted cases are found in the Yangon within a few days. In Light Township, there are three facility quarantine centers. Many returnees from abroad are also staying in these quarantine centers. There are a total of 50 to 60 people per day at those centers. Not only returnees, but also people who had returned from the Rakhine state are at those centers, and the people who have close contact with the infected patients are at the centers too. We also urged the residents and ward administrators to inform us as soon as there are the people who had returned from the Rakhine state by plane, express, or other ways. Since the last week, we launched a mass campaign in our township, especially in the markets and crowded places. We may say we had passed the first wave of the COVID-19 and we are facing the beginning of the second wave infection. Since many of the infected patients don't show any symptoms and don't have serious condition, we have to prevent ourselves not to be infected from the COVID-19 patients in this period. As the cases have started rising in the country within 15 days, all the people in Yangon and other regions and states become cautious a lot about the infections. Not only in the Rakhai states, but also in the Yangon region, Mon state, Mandalay region, Bago region and Southern Shan state have also detected similar local transmitted cases. The Ministry of Health and Sports also announced the people to follow the rules and guidelines released. That's a report on COVID-19 confirmed cases double in number within 15 days from 16 August. As it has been about four years since the current government was formed, the books on what the government has been doing have been published by the Ministry of Information, which was introduced to the public on 27 August at the Office of Ministry of Information in Nebido. It is hoped that the public will learn and understand what the government has been doing and collaborate with the government for further progress. Willison has the full report. 17 different books on the reformation works of the current government was released and introduced to the public on 27 of August at the office of the Ministry of Information in Nibiru, where the Union Minister for the Ministry of Information and other top officials from different ministries and departments attended the event. As it has been more than four years, publishing books on the works, projects and reformation and other initiatives taken by the government is one of the best ways to tell the public about what the government has been doing. Although there are media platforms operating under the Ministry of Information, publishing books can also make a huge change in telling the reformation work being carried out by the government according to Dr. Pei Min, Union Minister for the Ministry of Information. Speaking at the event, Dr. Pei Min said, So what are the no time you know, but one can carry any lower low the Initially, the main task for the Ministry of Information in the past was publishing. Even when we look at the colonial time, when the British ruled, the main task was to publish what was the government doing so that the public can learn and understand what their government is doing, keeping all the records of what the government is doing. Therefore, the genesis for the Ministry of Information is publication. And then we transformed into radio and television later on, where we also have information and public relation for better relation between the government and the public. Although publication is least known to the public, it is one of the prioritized tasks for the Ministry of Information. As the Ministry of Information is the bridge which connects between the government and the public, which is why we want to tell to the public what the government is doing. Our motto itself is giving information, knowledge, and entertain the public. And today, 
introduced in the books is aimed to impart the information to the public. According to Dr. Pei Mian, as the present government was elected by civilians, it has a duty to report to the public on what it has been doing, where this Ministry of Information is the main bridge to connect between the government and the public. At the event, all the attendees from the respective ministries and departments were presented the newly introduced books. Wu Tun Tun Nai, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Planning, Finance and Industry, also gave his remarks and he said, <laughs> As its main goals, the present government has been working hard with the people for rule of law, the socio-economic development of the people, reconciliation and peace in constructing democratic federal nation. We have records on yearly walks of all the departments from different states and regions for the past four years. However, in order to keep all the records for long, it cannot be done without the collaborative efforts between the Ministry of Information and the public. If we are to record all the works performed by the government, we will have many more books than we have today. Among many works done by the government, we have books on salient points of all the works as it has been carefully documented. These books will be very useful for sure. I also believe that the people will learn and understand the work being carried out by the government and work together for the good of the nation. Apart from the works of the government, the speeches given by high-ranking governmental officials have also been recorded in these books to understand the views and the opinions of different leaders and officials. According to the report, a set of books which contains 17 different books cost more than 400,000 jet. That's the report on books on government's reformation works released. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. Since 21st of August, 1,000 bed at Nebidol General Hospital has been able to run COVID-19 tests on its own, where more than 40 suspected cases can be completed in a day. As the number of domestic transmission has been on the right once again, this hospital is also running the test on a daily visit. Willison will tell us the full report from Nebidaw. Nebidaw, the capital of Myanmar, had one of the first COVID-19 infected patients in Myanmar. In this fight of COVID-19, 1,000 bed at Nebidaw General Hospital played the main role. As this hospital was unable to run swab tests initially, it had to collect the samples and send them to Yangon for further testing. When the infected cases were reported by the end of March, this hospital was reserved as the place to treat the infected patients, making the hospital prepare for the possible infected, which involved extending of ICU beds and other resources. Speaking about one of the earliest infected cases, which happened to be the patients here in this hospital, Delta Papa, medical superintendent of 1000 bed at Navy General Hospital said, while we were still in the process of improving the facilities in this hospital, we had the first COVID-19 case, which was case 7. We were able to treat well this and that patient was discharged from this hospital after the test showed negative results for two times. Till today, we have 437 suspected patients who have gone through the test. Here we took the samples and sent those samples to NHL for further tests. But now, as we have the test kit and other equipment for swab tests, we can run the tests here in this hospital. The real time it takes to complete the test is more than one hour, which, unlike before, when there was no test kit available here in, so we sent the sample to Yangon for the results, which took times and consumed lots of labor. But now, as we can complete the tests here in this hospital, that it reduces the workloads, labor, time, and money. Not only the suspected patients can complete the tests here in this hospital, this hospital can also do the tests from other townships such as Lewei and Pimana or other hospitals from nearby Nebido after receiving the sample. 
Dr. Aulin is Deputy Superintendent of 1000 Bed at Nebido General Hospital, and he also explained more. In this process of fighting against COVID-19 here in this hospital, we don't walk individually. We use team approach in the fight. We have different experts from different fields and departments. And then we have a committee which decides what to do in the process of whole. The administration is to support the necessary things. We run everything under the guidelines of the Ministry of Health and Sports. And then for the necessary equipment, we collaborate with different respective departments. Dr. Kai Wen Tung is one of medical doctors who is specialized in genes, also spoke and said. Since the 21st of August, we have been able to perform the tests with Jenny Expert. We mainly run the tests for suspected patients from in and around Nebido by taking samples of the droplets from the nose and throat. We can bring the results in a very short time. Four sample tests can be run at once, which takes about more than one hour to two hours with the preparation time, so which makes it can do more than 40 sample tests in a day if we run this Jenny expert for 24 hours. At first, we take samples from suspected patients where only the expert with the full equipment would collect the sample. As a second step, we store the data of the suspected patients by using triple package box, which will be unboxed by the expert in the laboratory with the full protection. All these processes also involve the cleaning and disinfection of the equipment. And after getting the results, we send the data to respective officials in time. According to the report from the officials from this hospital, there are nearly 1,000 staff here in this hospital altogether from head to the lowest stop. There are 500 to 600 internal patients here on a daily basis along with 900 external patients on a daily basis. In addition, all the patients also have their helpers which make there are 4,000 to 500 people in this hospital. That's the report on COVID-19 swap task situation in Nebido. The government has started anti-COVID-19 measures across the country since March at a time when the first confirmed case was found, banning on a mass gathering, festivity, and religious ceremonies. Until now, the people are requested to follow the COVID-19 restrictions as well. With the restrictions aimed at preventing and controlling the COVID-19, all religious structures, including Shui De Gong Bagoda, the significant landmark of Myanmar, Miaou and Ewa archaeological areas, where most of the foreign tourist visits are still under closure. It was reported by Amu, Shenai, and Mimintong. The government has started anti-COVID-19 measures across the country since March, at a time when the first confirmed case was found, burning on mass gathering, festivities and religious ceremonies. Until now, the people are requested to follow the COVID-19 restrictions as well. With the restrictions aimed at preventing and controlling the COVID-19, all religious structures, including Shui De Gong Pagoda, the significant landmark of Myanmar, Miaou and Inwa archaeological areas where most of the foreign tourists visit are still under closure. The COVID-19 is having effects on all sectors, and the residents in Inwa archaeological area are also the same matter due to the COVID-19 resurgence. The government relaxed restrictions slowly by slowly when the situation of the COVID-19 slowed down and there were no locally transmitted cases as well. But unfortunately, in the act of hoping to reopen religious structures, the resurgence of the COVID-19 resulted in hard time rather than expected. Wu Teng Nanli, member of Inwa Shui Si Gopagoda Board of Trustees said. As all the permissions to the local worship during the pandemic have been closed, there are losses. Usually, there are the people actively coming to Inwa more or less and perform good deeds, donate money and offerings to the pagoda. 
Two members of Pagoda Board of Trustees have been appointed for the Pagoda, and the electric bill per month is nearly 50,000 jats. I think things will be getting worse because the resurgence already came before the first wave is over. In the act of hoping things for better and reopening of pagodas and monasteries, the resurgence of the virus broke out in the country. The government allowed factories and industries to reopen and the gathering of 30 people. So the things would be harder than before. In the past years, we received 400,000 jets from the donation of the visitors to the pagoda, but now we get only 90,000 jets from the donations. The horse carriage drivers and the people who depend on the Inwa archaeological area are facing the hard livings due to the resurgence of the COVID-19. Utan Senwe, horse carriage driver from Inwa Bodo Mukwati said. We are facing problems in this period of COVID-19. We have been staying at home for over six months. The numbers of local guests are still fewer because of the pandemic. So we are facing issues for our living. Before the pandemic, many foreign guests were visiting here and we had daily income of 30,000 chests from our services provided to them. But we have no income in this pandemic period. For the time being, I'm driving taxi here and there. And when I have free time, I go to Bakuda for cleaning matters. Not only the people who are living in Inwa archaeological area, but also the monks and the nuns who are doing meditation were facing the problems in shortages of rations. To Etengi, the nun from Amdama Yekta Monastery said. <laughs> As the restrictions are still in effect these days, we cannot go for seeking or foreign M's, and the people don't come here in our monastery. We are trying our best during the restrictions period. We have been restricted to go out for necessary M's, so we have the problems in our living. In the past, the Bogotas were full of pilgrims, but now the Bogotas are quiet in this chaos. We are taking care of our own as the hill is the first priority. Inwa archaeological area is situated in the confluence of Eauri and Minge rivers. It is about 11 miles far from Mandalay, about 3 miles from Dadau, where the international airport is located. There are many ancient temples and pagodas and other famous religious structures in Inwa archaeological area. That's the report on residents in Inwa archaeological area face travel in COVID-19 resurgence. And that's all we have for today's report. And it's time to check on some international news here on Myanmar Today. Senior Chinese official Yan Jiechi will visit Myanmar, Sepay and Greece from September 1st to September 4th. China's foreign ministry said on Monday. Yang, a member of the political bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and director of the Office of the Foreign Affairs Commissions of CPC Central Committee, will make the official visit at the invitations of the three countries' governments, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lichin said in Beijing. It's the former Foreign Minister's second overseas visit within a month. He visited China's neighbor Singapore and South Korea from August 19 to 22. In the meantime, Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi is currently on a five-state visit in Europe, with trade and COVID-19 on his agenda. According to the hospital in New Delhi, Prana Mukherjee, 84-year-old former president of India, died on Monday afternoon. Mukaji suffered from brain surgery at a military hospital in the capital this month. Before surgery, he had tested positive for COVID-19. He was the country 13th president from 2012 to 2017. Prime Minister Narendra Modi offered the nation's condolences on the death of Mukaji, saying the former president has left an indelible mark on the development trajectories of our nation. End quote. 
The novel coronavirus cases surpassed six million in the U.S. on Sunday, as many states in the Midwest reported increasing number of infections, according to the writer's tally. Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota have recently reported record one-day increases in new cases, while Montana and Idaho are seeing record numbers of currently hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Nationally, metrics on new cases, deaths, hospitalizations, and the positivity rate of tests are declining. But there are emerging hotspots in the Midwest. A majority of the new cases in Iowa are in the countries that are home to University of Iowa and Iowa State University, which are holding some in-person classes. Colleges and universities around the country have seen outbreak. After the students return to campus, forcing some to switch to online-only learning. More than eight months into the pandemic, the U.S. continued to struggle with testing. The number of people getting tested for the virus has fallen in recent weeks. That toll could reach 200,000 by mid-September. Colleges and universities in at least 36 states have seen outbreaks after students returned to campus. More than 1,000 students at the University of Alabama have tested positive since classes resumed. And in California, over 3,600 new cases have been reported, bringing total infections in the state to more than 700,000. A state official describes its new reopening plan as stringent and slow. And that's all we have for today. Thank you very much for joining me on Myanmar Today. I'm Michelle. Have a good day. I'll see you next time.